Welcome back to the lab. Today marks a very important day for me, you, us, and this electronic load project. A moment we've all been waiting for. Literally, everyone has been waiting for this day. Yes, everyone's on the edge of their seat, just waiting for us to get some hardware in the lab and prototype. Nope, that was bad. I'm gonna retry the bit. Yes! I know that's what you were thinking. So. Let's do that today. We are going to start by implementing a driver that controls an 8-bit SPI. DAC. Yes, indeed, we're going to have some fun, but first I need to tell you something. A long while ago, in fact, in our channel trailer, I told you that this channel exists to inspire others to learn by doing projects that challenge them. I told you that I intended to lead by example by doing projects that challenge me. And I'm bringing this up for one very important reason. Well, it's important to me. I've never used a SPI ADC or a SPI DAC before. I've always found a way to use the ones integrated into a micro because for most applications, if you already need a microcontroller, the best move is to buy a microcontroller with sufficient analog hardware built in because buying one component and soldering it to the board is generally cheaper than buying four components, integrating them and soldering them to the board. The software is more complex, the hardware is more complex, and the assembly is more complex. That's usually not the right play. but I've never done it before, not once. And one small perk of doing this project is that it provides me with an excuse to lay out an architecture that allows me to do that. It allows me to push myself by doing something that I haven't done before, just so that I know how it works and I know how to do it for the future, because someday I might need to. And it'll be good that I can step confidently into that scenario and knowing that I've done it before knowing what I'm signing up a software engineer to do, knowing what I'm signing up the manufacturing house to do, knowing what I'm signing up the hardware design team to do. It's very important to me that I understand what it means to design something. Basically, I want to learn when spy analog peripherals like ADCs and DACs make sense, when they don't, when they work, and when they won't. So let's dive in. The first thing that we need to talk about is soldering. Um, I will give you one of two things. I will either give you a picture close up of the soldering job on this DAC, which is not pretty, or I will go ahead and solder one again just for the B roll. Uh, either way. As a surprise to no one, we prepped these videos a little bit and we soldered the part to the board and wrote some software. So we're just going to walk through how that went, but this is what that looks like. Yeah, it actually went pretty easy. Um, so to talk through exactly what we did, we have a 0.65 millimeter pin pitch component with eight leads. We have a breakout board with half millimeter pitch and 0.95 millimeter pitch for 10 pins. And I just kind of looked at the pads and got it kind of aligned and hoped and, and wished and wondered if I could find a way to put that component on that pad without shorting the whole thing together. The 0.95 was a no-go. Absolutely not. Just did not line up. But if I stuck one of my pads between two of the others, that kind of lined me up just so that I was convinced that I could get it on there. And I did. No shorts. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'll be thankful to have the right footprint in the real design. But it got it on there. No shorts and everything's connected. Okay, step one done. It's soldered, we can get it in our breadboard. Um, another glorious point is I even reused the leads of the resistors because I didn't have wire other than my nice breadboard jumpers and I didn't have male header pins. So I just clipped off a little bit of the leads of our resistors and shoved it into the breadboard with that. Sometimes constraints leads to ingenuity and it gets the job done. You don't need everything. There's two things that we need to understand. One of them is the protocol and the other one is the Arduino. Basically, the data sheet lists out exactly how to control this part. It gives us this great timing diagram and tells you that for one clock pulse, you need to give it a, a logic level high sync and that must reset some stuff. It needs to have clock edges there. So 
we know that for at least one clock cycle, we need to give it a sync pulse. And then on the falling edge, it will begin accepting 16 bits of data. And then you need to put the sync line high. So sync is basically a fancy word for chip select. I don't know why they didn't just call it chip select, but they call it sync. So here we go. And then uh, scrolling down a bit further, they describe those 16 bits in more detail. They say that it's a don't care, don't care, two configuration bits. There's four configuration bits, basically. And then you have your eight bits of data and then four padded bits at the end. And that becomes your eight bit command. And then you have four bits in the front and four bits behind that are garbage. So we need to write some software that will do exactly that. Now you're looking at the Arduino IDE. Sorry, it's a little small, but we'll post this link in the description, download this, take a look for yourself. Basically it turns on the spy bus, uh, defines the chip select pin, and what it does is it just walks through and outputs a few different values to the DAC. It should write 255, so it should be five volts, 128, which should be two and a half, zero, which should be zero, and then 51, which should be a volt. And uh, yeah, what we do is we send that command with the send byte. Basically what we do is we shift the, so we take our input, we shift it, four bits in one direction, four bits in the other, and then pad zeros on either side. So all the dummy bits, and we tell it to turn on, uh, getting to that protocol. Then we start the transaction, we send both of those bytes, and then we end the transaction. We are at the bench, and here's what I have for you. Essentially, we've got the DAC down here, the ADC is up there, but it's not doing anything right now. And we've got the interface coming back and some resistors to scale the output voltage as we like. We just sent 255 and we see 4.8 volts. We'll double check that's the VCC voltage. Send 128 and now we see 2.4. So divided by two, that's looking very promising. Now let's wait for the zero. I think zero is coming up next. We should see it drop down to, hey, look at that, three millivolts. It's pretty darn close to zero. And then we should see one volt with the next output. We should see 51. Yes, look at that. Look at that. So just about one volt. So what I would expect to see is that VCC is just a touch light. What are we seeing? 4.9. Good, good. If that was exactly five volts, I'd be a little concerned, but it's not. So it looks like this system is functioning as expected. Perfect looks like we've got a DAC driver. It looks like soldering this part under the wrong footprint and putting it on a breadboard and having no decoupling capacitors kind of, sort of, worked. I'd never design a product this way. I'd never use this in the electronic load this way. But as a proof of concept, we have proven that this spy driver and this configuration of a spy peripheral is correct. It feels really good to get back in the shop and to take this next big step of our journey. And if you like this video, if you can't wait for more, if you can't wait for our ADC debug, I'm not gonna give away any spoilers, but I've got a feeling uh, it might not go quite so well without decoupling capacitors on an ADC. But if you're excited for that and you can't wait, then let me know by getting subscribed, hitting that like button, or leaving a comment down below. Coming up soon, we'll be prototyping the ADC, like we said, and adding in the I2C display. I can't wait. If you want to support the channel, consider checking out the links in the description. There's a link to this Arduino code as well as our Patreon page. And thank you to those who have decided to take the step of supporting us there. That really helps to keep this all possible. Thank you. Most of all, I hope that you learned something great today and I hope to see you again soon. So thank you for watching EE for everyone and thank you for staying till the end. Bye.